my dad always tells me, be safe, have fun, keep your head up, I love you. I go into the rink knowing that I'm always loved, no matter how I play. But some of my friends with the crazy parents walk into the rink scared that making a safe will cause them their parents' love. Having fun is what youth sports is all about, but seven out of 10 kids quit before the age of 13. Not surprisingly, one of the top reasons for kids quitting, parents. This is not an uncommon scenario for many kids in youth sports. The parents get mad at them all because of a bad game. I like to call parents like this crazy parents because they are kind of crazy. <laughs> at a ski race, parents were communicating via helmet walkie-talkie to the son while he was racing. Imagine it, you're racing down on the, on the ski hill with your dad yelling in your ear, bend your knees more, right ski up. And recently, a Chanhassen mother of four was banned from any youth sporting events due to her behavior towards other players. Todd Maranovich is the son of former NFL offensive guard Marvin Maranovich. From the day he was born, Todd was trained to be a football all-star. By the age of 10, Todd ran 10 miles every single day. He had never been to, to a fast food restaurant, only eating food his dad provided. Growing up, Todd didn't have many friends and often spent weekends with his dad practicing. So by the time Todd went off to college, he found himself lost with no direction of friends or really anything else, drowning in the pressure to perform. By the age of 24, Todd was a full-blown drug addict. 45 million kids play sports in the US, but less than 2% actually end up playing Division I in college. So why take that gamble? Why spend hours and hours practicing when there's less than a 2% chance? I play a lot of hockey and I love it. I personally play sports to make lifelong friendships. Some of my best friends live in places like Grand Rapids, Moorhead, and Chicago. I was recently in Europe playing at the World Selects Hockey Tournament and there I befriended girls from all around the world. Girls from Germany, Finland, Sweden, Russia, and even Japan. We all became friends because of the common love for the game. I love getting better and better each season. And I know it sounds cheesy, but I do love stepping off the ice knowing that I did my very best. But perhaps one of the best things about sports for me personally is my parents. My mom and dad are not the ones that yell and scream during the game or on the car at home. Not the ones that tell the coach how to do his job. My parents are the ones that encourage me. They offer advice, but never cross that line between encouragement and just plain insane. In today's world, there are way too many parents that are crossing that line and becoming crazy parents. Players like Todd Maranovich never have fun and are only forced to play. When, and are only forced to play. Former NHL player Patrick O'Sullivan was physically abused by his dad, John. Patrick says the abuse started at, started at age five when he got his first pair of skates. The beatings were daily and intensified as he got older. Once Patrick stepped off the ice, he was no longer safe. He would put cigarettes out on me, choke me, throw full soda cans at my head. Every time I stepped on the ice, I knew that my play would determine just how bad I got it when we would get home. This actually happened to someone, and it is happening in homes all across the US, all because of a bad game. Parents always say that they want for the, the best for their kids, but are they actually helping? In Patrick's case, his dad, John, was trying to pursue his very own passions through Patrick. He thought that by making Patrick toughen up would get somehow get him to the NHL too, but it didn't. 
At the age of 16, Patrick finally stood up to his dad and called the cops. A restraining order was enforced, and John could not come within 100 feet of his very own son. What parents don't realize is they're not always helping, and they're not always right. I mean, you should meet my dad. He's never right. Another sad part of the story is to this day, John still believes he's the reason Patrick made it to the NHL. And with social media on the rise, parents are even using that to get back at other players, parents, coaches, and even refs. A woman recently posted a comment that said, my daughter worked her butt off and scored three goals, but the ref only gave her credit for two of them. What would drive someone to post a comment like that, much less post it? And how is her daughter going to remember that? I mean, I don't even remember what I had for breakfast. So I guess my point is, there are more important things than a U-12 hockey game. Parents are so caught up in their kids' play that they sometimes don't pay attention to what's happening off the field, off the course, off the court, or off the ice. Studies show that parents, or that kids with parents constantly applying pressure on them, grow up to have lower incomes and have a higher probability of experimenting with drugs. So what makes you a crazy parent? Why did I start yelling at the TV when the ref said that Zach Crazy didn't score, when it obviously was not a kicking motion? And what can we do to keep kids in sports? One in three parents yell at their kids because of a bad game. And parents, if you are part of the one in three, there's really no surprise. When I walked on stage today, I smiled. And most of you smiled back. Polite thing to do, right? But it actually has a thing to do with mirror processing. The same thing that causes you to yawn when you see someone else yawn. Mirror neurons in your brain send messages to the rest of your body when you see someone you're really rooting for or really rooting against perform an action. So when you're watching your favorite college football team and the ref makes a bad call, you start and you start standing up yelling at the refs through the TV who can't actually hear you, you're actually using a different region of your brain than you would in a neutral situation. So what can parents do to help their kids? Well, first and foremost, they have to show their kids that they love them. By yelling because of a bad game, parents are only showing their kids that they have to play good to get their parents' love. Is that what love is really about? Having a good game? On the car ride home, parents should ask their kids how they think they played first. This is what Patrick O'Sullivan recently commented. Having a 12-year-old kid run six miles after practice isn't going to turn them into Jonathan Tapes. And Jonathan Tapes is a professional hockey player, for those of you that don't know. <laughs> what parents need to realize is a game is only a few hours, but a loving relationship with their kid is forever. Thank you.